If you think this is gameplay from a new Mega Man X game, well, you're wrong. This is Android Hunter A, the new indie action platformer by developer Digiplox, where you play as A, who is an android hunter who goes after rogue androids who are the bad guys in this game. Sounds familiar? Well, that's because it's basically the plot of Mega Man X, just with different names. What makes Android Hunter A unique are its modern looking graphics, and its intense female representation. Oh my god, what is that? What? Oh my... Are those robot boobs? Are you kidding me? Why, is it, why does the robot have boobs? Seriously though, the themes in this game are so close to those that are in the Mega Man franchise, it's borderline plagiarism. It almost feels like a fan game that became its own thing around two months before release. Even the first level of the game is basically the intro to Mega Man X. After finishing the tutorial area, you can then choose which level to play next. You can play these levels in any order you like and even replay them if you want to. After defeating a boss in that area, you then get a special ability. The gameplay, unsurprisingly, follows the same principles as the Mega Man franchise. In some instances, I'd say it's a bit too much. For example, the controls are very responsive. However, the movement of the character itself is a little bit rough on the edges. And also, the complete lack of animation blending makes things only worse. Wall sliding and wall jumping are present as well, but poorly implemented for a 2020 game. Unfortunately, some of the biggest problems in this game are the hitboxes. They're way too big, both for the player model and enemy models. Sometimes it feels like the player model just has this large hitbox around him and that's it. And it's ridiculous. Listen, I know this game didn't have the same budget as Dark Souls 3 for example, but come on. Hitboxes are relatively easy to implement in Unreal Engine 4, on which this game is running on. Not to mention, you don't need to have the collision box be the hitbox. You can have different boxes. Come on. The poor hitboxes accompanied with some very unfortunate obstacle placements just makes for a very frustrating experience. Even for a veteran Mega Man player like me, playing this game made me feel like a playtester, as if nobody other than the development team played this game before release. When playing Android Hunter A, it feels like you're playing an alpha build or a beta or whatever. The entire game just feels unpolished and unfinished. In fact, when I was reviewing this game before its official release, I was under the assumption that I was playing some kind of beta pre-release version, but no. This was the latest possible version, and it's probably going to be the version you get if you buy it right now. One thing I think needs to be fixed immediately is the menu screen. It's horrible. Not only is the design of the menu screen bare bones, it also lacks some very important options such as VSync. I had to manually enable it through my NVIDIA control panel. This is probably the worst menu screen I've ever had to deal with. It's unresponsive, it's laggy, probably because of the background effects, which are probably taxing the CPU, I don't know. But it, this needs to be fixed immediately. Changing the resolution in this game was more difficult than some of the bosses. Otherwise, during standard gameplay, you get a stable 60 FPS even with everything maxed out. It's not a very taxing game past the menu screen. However, Again, sometimes I get very strange frame times, especially during boss battles. I suppose it's due to some bugs in the AI programming, I don't know. The best way I can describe this game's graphics is that it looks phenomenal in screenshots. However, I don't think this is just thanks to the efforts made by the art team. I legitimately think it's difficult to make a game look bad in Unreal Engine 4. The particle effects, the screen space reflections, the lighting just makes anything look good. The game has some very interesting looking character models, as well as environment designs. Unfortunately, the art style of this game is bogged down by its uninspired level layouts, as well as poor AI in some of its enemies. In terms of sound design, this game has no issues at all. This is a nice track- oh my god, robot boobs again! <laughs> the game has some nice tracks here and there, the sound effects are nice and crisp, and it's all properly mixed together. 
From what I can tell after searching the web extensively, this game has been in development for around 5 years or so. In any other case, I'd say this game needed more development time, more polish. However, after 5 years, I think it's better for the developer to just leave it be and forget about it. It would be best for Digiplox to learn from the mistakes they made in their first commercial release, and hopefully start working on a new project, this time with way more experience. However, as it stands right now, Android Hunter 8 is not a game I could recommend to anybody. Despite the effort which you could see was put into this game, Android Hunter A is just way too rough for me to recommend to any Mega Man fan. Well, I can't believe I'm finally done with that review. Wait, what? So Android Hunter A just received an update right in between the time I finished the review and was about to publish it. The update brings some bug fixes and also incremental changes to the movement of the character, which coincidentally is something that I critiqued heavily in this review. In particular, wall jumping has been improved significantly. The menu is still broken by the way, however by the time this review is published, things might have changed. The developer has also promised to improve the movement even further in following updates. Along with that, there are some minor updates to the layouts of some of the levels. Due to the fact that the developer is actively updating this game and fixing all the issues I had with it, I have to change the score. There's also the possibility that the game will improve even further with more updates. I'm retracting the conclusion to this review. If you're a Mega Man X enthusiast and you still have the itch for that gameplay, then keep an eye out for Android Hunter A in the upcoming months. With further bug fixes and gameplay improvements, this game might become decent in some time. For newcomers though, I'd recommend to play the original Mega Man games. Thanks a lot for watching this review. For more reviews, check out gbatemp.net.